Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new tutorial for you on how to create the deep blue and orange look. This is a variation of the teal and orange look. This is one of the many ways you can create this look. And it uses the skin tones as its orange hue and its complementary color to create that nice warm and cool color contrast. First thing we're going to do is look at the node tree structure and then we're going to get into the tutorial. So first up, I have a noise reduction node, which I always do at the beginning of all my grades. This is optional, you don't have to do this. After that, we have an exposure node and a balance node. This is where we're going to adjust our primaries, but for this look, the way we adjust our primaries is going to change a little bit, and I'll go into that once we're there. After that, we have our blue and orange node where we're going to apply our look, and then we have this hues node here where we're going to adjust the look. After this node, we have a contrast node where we're going to adjust the overall contrast of the look, and then we have this adjustment node here where we'll apply some power windows to shape the light a little bit. After that, we have a glow node and then a film grain node. And then once we get to the glow section, I'll explain what this node is doing here. If you watch my other tutorials, you know what it does. But if you're new here, then I'm going to show you a great way to apply glow that's going to help create some atmosphere in your shot. The first thing we have to do is actually create the look. What we're actually going to create is called a two strip look, which is a color film process that was developed by the company Technicolor back in the 1920s. And basically what this look did was allowed light to pass through a red channel and a green channel resulting in red and green tones and no blue tones at all in the image. And it was a very popular look in Hollywood during the 1930s and 40s. The effect that we're going to be creating in this tutorial is very similar and takes advantage of that technique, but we're going to tweak it a little bit to give us that deep blue and orange look. And so this note here is going to create the bulk of our look. So we're going to go ahead and create the two strip look by going over to our RGB channels, going over to the blue output, and we're going to set the blue channel to zero and the green channel to one. I'm going to open up my vector scope here. Now that we've made this adjustment, we can see that all our cues are being compressed down into this axis here, and that is giving us that two strip effect. Now we want to shift this over so that we're aligned with the skin tone indicator line here. So I'm going to go over to my hues node. I'm going to go back to the primaries panel and under hue, I'm going to bring it down to around 44. And now we're aligned with the skin tone indicator line, but our image is not looking quite right. That's because now we have to go into this balance node here and decide how much blue we want and how much orange we want. And if I go over to my offset wheel and move this around, if you look over to the vector scope, you see that everything is just moving within this orange and blue axis. And that's because this node here has compressed all the hues in our shot down onto this axis. Okay, so now we're working with only these two colors. And in this balance node here, you get to decide how much of those colors you want in your shot. Since the red and the cyan axis are the closest to this line, then you can use the red channel controls in all these wheels to control the balance of these two colors in your shot. You can start off by adjusting the offset wheel and bringing it down or up. For this shot here, I'm going to set it somewhere around here. You can also use the red channels in the gain wheel and the lift wheel to adjust the amount of orange or blue in the highlights or the amount of orange or blue in the shadows. But I'll leave that up to you depending on your footage. Again, you can use the red channel controls or you can use the color wheels as well. In this note here, I just wanna adjust the overall exposure, focusing on my subject. And then later on in the contrast node, I'll be able to add some pop and contrast to the image. So I'm pretty happy where this is sitting. I am gonna increase the exposure just a little bit to give myself some room in the shadows because I know that I want to add some contrast and I want to have room in the shadows to push it a little bit. So now that we've done that, I want to show you one more way that you can adjust the amount of color in your shot. So in this hues node here, you can go over to the hue versus saturation curves and you can adjust the amount of orange saturation and blue saturation in your shot. And for this look, this is what I like to do to control the balance a little bit more. For my hue versus saturation curves, I always have my histograms on set to output so that I can see where my colors are sitting. And because I can see where my colors are, I can create these individual dots. And now I can adjust the saturation of the orange individually or the blue. For this shot here, we have a lot of orange, so I'm gonna leave that where it is. I just wanna make sure to leave this anchor here so that when I adjust the blue, I'm not adjusting the orange as well, and vice versa. To create that deep desaturated blue, the way to get that is by coming here and lowering the saturation of the blue. Okay, for this shot, I'm liking how much blue I have here. I'm not gonna desaturate it too much. I'm just gonna leave it here. And again, I have enough orange in my shot, so I'm gonna leave that where it is. And I might come back and adjust this a little bit more. After that, I'm gonna go over to my contrast node. I'm gonna go over to my primaries panel, and I'm gonna use this contrast control to add some pop to my image. You don't have to use this method. You can use a curve adjustment or some other way of adjusting contrast. You can use the gain and lift wheels if you want. I'm just going with the contrast control for simplicity. 
So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna increase it. I'm keeping an eye on my subject here, especially around here in her hair. I know that I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast with this glow note here. So I don't wanna crush it all the way. So after adding contrast, we can shape the light a little bit in this adjustment node. This adjustment node is completely optional. If it doesn't work for your shot or if you don't wanna apply this to your shot, you don't have to. So I'm gonna go over to my power windows. I'm gonna grab the gradient power window. I'm gonna hit shift H to see my selection. And then I'm gonna bring this around and I'm gonna bring it down and then I'm just gonna feather it just a little bit more. I'm gonna hit shift H to come out of that. And then what I'm gonna do is go over to my curves. I'm gonna ungroup all the curves so that I don't adjust my saturation. And I'm gonna bring down the brightness just a little bit to help lead the eye into our subject's head and the center of the frame. And that's good there. Now I'm gonna apply a glow effect in this node. So I'm gonna go over to effects, I'm gonna search for glow, and I'm gonna drag it in. For my settings, I'm gonna go over to my shine threshold and bring it all the way down. I'm gonna set my composite type to soft light, and then I'm gonna bring my opacity all the way down. To get this node here, you right click on a node, down to add matte, and then choose your shot. And then that'll add this node here, which is essentially working as a luma mask. And you can do the same thing in the qualifier tool, but some people find it tedious to go into the qualifier tool every time, turn on the luminance, and then adjust the mask according to what you want. I find it a little bit easier sometimes just to right click and add the matte node, and it's done there. If I select this node and hit shift H, this is essentially the mask that we're getting. So everything that's white or brighter is where the effect is gonna be applied, and everything that's darker or black is where the effect will not be applied or be applied much less so. So with these settings here that I showed you and this matte node here, this glow node is now gonna act a little differently and it's gonna create some nice atmosphere and contrast in our shot. So I'm gonna grab the opacity and I'm gonna bring it up until I feel like I'm getting a result that I like. And that's good there, I'm liking the contrast that I'm getting. Now that I've added this effect, I'm going to go back to my balance node and adjust the balance of the look a little bit more. After that, I'm going to go back to the hues node and in the hue versus saturation curve, I'm going to bring down my blue just a little bit more. I might go all the way and then come back. As you can see, that's gonna help give you that deep blue look. This will vary by shot, but if you wanna get that effect, this is where you do it. I might even increase the saturation of the orange just a little bit. Then I'll go back to my contrast node and decrease the contrast. Open up the shot a little bit. Right there. And this is good here, I'm liking where this is at. Okay, so you've seen how we created this look. Because it is very restrictive and it compresses all the hues in your shot into this one axis, you might find that this blue and orange color palette doesn't work for every shot. I wanna show you how you can bring back a little bit more color into your footage. I'm gonna use this shot here to illustrate that. The way to do this is to go into the blue and orange node, go over to your key panel, and in the gain control under key output, you can bring down the value until you feel like you're getting some more natural color back in your shot. I'm gonna reset this here to show you how I did it for this shot. So I'll double click here to reset it, and then I'm gonna go over to my hues node, and in the primaries wheel, under hue, I'm gonna bring it back to 44. So going back to the blue and orange node, this is how this shot looked after applying this color grade. And it doesn't look bad per se, but if I turn off the grade real quick, this guy is wearing this backpack that has this nice yellow to it, and I wanted to bring some of that yellow back into the shot to help create a split complementary color scheme. And so to bring back some of that yellow, I went to the gain and I brought it down until I felt like I was getting a little bit more color separation between the subject and his backpack. As I adjust this gain control, if you look over to the vector scope, you can see the colors start to open back up and we're starting to get some more of that yellow. Not only that, but we're starting to open up and get just the tiniest bit more variation in the blues. It's still pretty compressed, but it is opening it up more. So if I grab this gain control and I keep working it, you can see how the vector scope starts to expand. And I found for this shot, somewhere around 0.5 was a good place to leave it. And so I'll leave it here. 
After bringing down the opacity of this node, we're still getting that orange and blue look, but now it's slightly off axis. So go back to the hues node and play with the hue control until we line up the majority of this vector scope here. So I'll grab the hue control and I'll line it up again with the skin tone indicator line. And for this shot, I found that 47 was giving me something I liked. I might even bring it down a little bit. That's good there. And that essentially ensures that our skin tones are that skin tone color and we have that beautiful complementary bluish teal color in our shot. And that's how you can bring back a little bit more color. Obviously, if you lower the opacity too much, then you'll start to get rid of the look. But if you bring it down just a little bit, you'll still have that deep blue and orange palette, but you'll be able to bring back a little bit more of the natural colors from your shot. If you wanna create a more filmic look, you can add some film grain. And you can do that by going to your effects, dragging in a film grain on the last node and then under settings what i did to get a more prominent noticeable grain is chose the 16 millimeter 500t film grain stock after choosing this preset i came down to the grain strength and brought it up just a little bit and then i came down to the advanced controls and brought down the grain in my shadows in my highlights and brought it up in my midtones. I did this to create just a little bit more textural depth in the shot. And that's how you create this deep blue and orange look. There's a link to this power grade as well as this LUT down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.